is that if you use your synthetic, you're gonna spend a lot of time putting paint on there. Does that make sense? The more paint, because you have to keep re-dipping. Now, the, the natural hair bristle, what it will do, it's gonna hold on to your paint. Like I can't say anymore, when students, I know you're comfortable with your synthetic brushes, but you're really kind of fighting the oil paint by doing it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just blocking in some darks and lights. Okay, I'm not doing anything fancy right now. Um, let's see what time it is. So I'm gonna do is just start painting her in a gray, you call it monochrome, one, one color, achromatic, um, where there's no color. But really, if you think of, I mean, raw umber is a color. So what I'm gonna do is just go over here. And what I don't wanna do is this. Eh, eh. There's no hardness on her face. Does that make sense, Sarah? Can you see, you can move. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend that in. And that's the beauty of oils, is that you can blend, right? So I'm going in and covering these large grounds. I'm just going in with those things. You can write this down. You can get lighter the next day and darker the next day. Do you understand? Now, even I put these caterpillar eyelashes on Zoe, I'm probably gonna soften up the edges a little bit. And she does have really um, thick eyebrows. She got that from her father. Um, so I'm gonna do is just, but if I'm fighting it like this, then that's too thin. Do you see that? Okay, don't, don't use the liquid or the gel that I gave you unless you really have to. So what I'm doing is basically right now, it's just looking for, A, the, the first thing students don't do right when they paint is they don't put enough paint on them, okay? So then you're fighting the paint. I put like a middle value on here, then I'm gonna put a little bit of light back in there to just suggest how that, that head starts to roll, right? Okay, whatever you do, don't make anything too abrupt. So I'm gonna go in and fight her eyeballs. This image is actually fairly small. She'd be like, mommy, why are you painting my nostril? Um, if she was here. So um, what I'm gonna do is take this. It's gonna take some practice. Remember that around the eyeball, you guys never make them dark enough because it sits back and it doesn't come forward. You don't want it to come forward. You want it to sit back. So the objective is that you get your image on there, whether you project it, whether you grid it, it's really up to you. I don't, I don't care as long as you get it on there and you start painting. Um, if you wanna start painting right away like I'm doing, then I really just suggest you, you project it. Okay, I'm gonna take a little here. And painting in oils is about brush pressure. If you are sloppy and are a French kisser, you will ruin your brush. If you lightly kiss the paint on top, sometimes I barely even touch, I just add a little bit of paint on there. Um, I'm gonna go in and smooth that out a little bit more. Do you see how she's starting to develop? Well, that hurts my arm painting sideways. Um, so what I'm gonna do in some of this is smooth things out. I'm gonna go into this. Any questions? Everybody knows what they're doing? Because I'm going to work on her face another five minutes. Is it okay if we work from grayscale? You are working from grayscale. Yes, you can. Uh, you need a picture? picture? Yes, you can. So um, I think I said that last time. I, I know I say a lot of stuff. Um, you can. Um, I, I, you could either throw it on Instagram or on your camera phone and change it to a, uh, a grayscale. If I had, because I'm using my camera, I'm not doing that, but you definitely can. The only caveat to that though, is that your darkest dark isn't gonna be light enough. So you have to compensate that it needs to stay light. Does that make sense? Okay, so like in Zoe's hair, I'm gonna show you how dark. Let me put the forehead on here real quick. On her forehead. One here. 
you know, most classical painters will start dark and put light in, and then you have some that starts light to dark. Because oil really is very forgiving, like you can go back and rework it. it it's really up to you. Like I, I kind of, I start out my lights because I don't want my lights um, to get too dark too fast, but you can always get lighter the next day, all right? Because once you start adding darks to it, my brush then gets dirty, right? Unless I use like three other brushes and say this is a light brush, a medium brush, a dark brush. You can do that. When I teach the other selfie assignment, what I try to get you guys to do, whatever you do, is separate is separate the, the, the bigger shapes, okay? Always start with bigger shapes. Don't worry about the smaller nuances. Like if I look at him, I, I know your, your skull is going like this, right? Even if I just go, eh, one, one value for right, right now, that's fine. Whatever you do, you can always soften it up. It's a good question, but it's really hard to just say, this is the right way because everybody works differently. I've seen master painters just start out with dark and then some will just start out with light and then they, they spot all their colors that way. What they don't under, what students sometimes get lost at a lot of times is not so much about how to start is more of like the, the, the simple value shifts that starts to happen in a face and an arm. Um, let me finish those forehead real quick. But do you see how I, now I paint this way and you guys are gonna start painting and depending on how good you are technically, you're gonna be like, she made it really easy. Okay, you, you gotta remember I've been painting for a while. Um, but I also am gonna work on one that's about Ava's size. If I choose this image, I, I might, but I'll do another video on a monochrome to start out with you guys as well. I, I also work on them if I have time simultaneously, because all my shows are kind of done right now, um, that I can work on a painting with you guys. So is this face in here. Uh, but I know how long it's gonna take you to paint it, okay? I, I really, I don't just give you stuff and say, oh yeah, why didn't they get 20 things done, right? Because I, I get it. So under the plane of the neck in here, so all I'm doing is, is finding the values, Asia. Okay, finding the values and shifting it. And now I'm gonna go into this other space. Right around the nose area, this area is gonna get dark, but I don't want to do this. Don't do that, that's too dark, okay? I, like I, I'll post this too, right? I got the video going. Um, and so don't, don't do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, is instead of, because I usually have paper towel with me, I'm gonna just take it off on the side and, and soften that up a little bit. So if that is where Zoe's eyeball is at, I'm losing where things are at right now. You're gonna spend obviously more than 10 minutes on yours. And I'm gonna go in and isolate these nose part for Zoe's nose. And let me see, I've got some painters in the past. I've only had a few that come through my program that could really hit everything perfectly. Um, otherwise, there's, uh, you guys have room to learn still. One of them, she, I don't know, Sarah, if you know her, Caitlin Bush, she does tattooing. She's in Nashville. Not that everybody needs to know everybody, but she's, uh, uh, both of my, the ones that I've had were tattoo artists They end up doing tattooing afterwards. I'm seeing where my eyeballs are at here, her eyes in here. Okay. All right, so as I'm working through this, I'm really thinking planar, like just the shape of that face and thinking about how you're gonna spend more time, like I said, but what I'm doing is I'm gonna go and smooth some of this out. I'm gonna put it on here and then I'm gonna smooth it out. And the lip is, please don't do this to the lips. Do you understand? Don't do that, okay? Cause I see you guys do this and it's like a happy face lip. Don't do that. It's not a Miss Potato Head, Mr. Potato Head or Mrs. Potato Head, whatever the hell you wanna call it. Um, the lip has six parts to it, and as you start to work, you'll start to understand. And for you new people who are just painting, 
just it's really even teaching that that workshop class this weekend it's all about shapes all right it's all about the shapes so if i ask you what a shape of an apple is you can tell me what the shape of an apple is if i say what is the shape of a lemon you can do that so when you get confused you stop you look and you say what is that shape so even though I know I'm colliding all these values and shape right now, because then I'm going to add my lights back into it. Let's see. She looks funny right here. Okay, I'm going to go into the hair. I'm going to smooth these areas up. She looks like she's just got her wisdom teeth taken out. She actually looks like this right now. She's all puffy like a chipmunk. And, and the thing is, if you're not doing what I'm doing in videotaping, is step back and look at your work. Do you see that? Okay. Um, you guys need to do that. So I'm using, I think, a, whatever it is, the number five. Um, I'm going to go in, in this area, and I'm going to make sure that this is smooth. And if I get a little bit, it's going to happen. Do you see that? I, but I'm lightly kissing it. And you're going to understand pressure. If I go like this, I'm adding paint. Do you understand? If I want things to move, usually you, put light, you go light towards dark. Does that make sense? Instead of dark to light. All right? You do that because then you don't backtrack. So what I'm going to do now is smooth out some of this stuff. And I'm going to look for the bigger shapes on Zoe's head. I'm going to show you. Ah. I'm going to show you. It's hard to do that and that. And that image is so tiny. Um, in this area, I know there's light. So I'll be, while it's still wet, I can put light back in there. All right. And if I lose my light, when you look at your image, say, what is the lightest light? Do you understand? then don't go any lighter in that area than any other places. That's how you're gonna understand value. What is the darkest dark? Don't go any darker than that area. So that gives you a little bit of an idea about how much light and how much dark things are. I'm gonna put her nostril back in there. Let's shape this in here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna spin your time getting your image on there. I gotta get Zoe's top lip in here. It's rare that the bottom lip is actually dark, but because I shot it in a different perspective, you see her bottom lip is actually dark. It's usually it's the other way around. The top lip is dark and the bottom lip is light. I'm gonna do here. Let's add a little bit here. Here, that's the uh, I might, if you got a lot of stuff like I do now with those, this flower, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the, deepen up the side plane here. I'm going to soften up this area here and go over her cheek, go across your, your plane. Okay. You should have learned that a little bit in drawing class to go over your cross contour is what I'm talking about. This area here. Area here, I'll find her eyebrow again. As landmarks, give yourself some landmarks. This here. The shape underneath the eye here. Space here. I'm saying like if that eye's there, keep that eye there. You have to have one thing right, okay? So then you can work off of that. So when we used to paint, when we had a model come in, it's the same thing as have one thing right, because then everything else can be, you can use that as a reference. This her eyeball in here. And do you see I'm keeping everything kind of simple right now? I'm just kind of spotting everything. I'm not going in and detailing the crap out of just one spot. I'm, I'm just kind of putting the values on here right now. And my drawing right now, I will always have to keep fixing parts of the drawing. I'll put nose, those picky nose in here. 
right. And I know it's lighter under here. So all I'm doing is really paying attention to value. So she doesn't have a Hitler mustache here. Uh, it's hard because I've got a foliage that's right there on her, her face. But I can go in and detail that a little bit more. I'm going to darken that back up, her nose. Um, it's not bad. All right, so I'm going to go in here because some of this I see texture. So I'm going to go in and slightly, just lightly kiss across that form. And making sure that everything stays smooth. And again, that's smooth, right? Do you see Ava's painting? You see my painting? It's, it's very smooth. So what I'm doing is now I'm going back in and I'm making sure that those, those larger shapes are correct. I'm squinting my eyes, making sure that's right. I know the side plane of her nose needs to stop. So I'm gonna put a, a little darker around here to isolate that and to isolate this as well, all right? Even if her nose not quite right yet, I'll, I'll keep fixing it. Um, and if you're watching me paint, you'll notice that I take a lot of paint off. I can regulate how much paint I put on there by doing that, making sure. See up here, her eyeballs up here. Questions? Okay, I know her cheeks are gonna get lighter, so I can always get lighter the next day. I'm not gonna worry about it as much right now. Um, okay. It looks fat because, well, her face is fat there um, because the drainage from the gravity. But I'm gonna go in and then I'm gonna make you come and look to see how smooth I have it. And you can, I'm not one of those teachers. You can take your finger and finger paint some of the classical says that's a no-no because you're adding some of your um, your uh, oil from your finger onto that. Yeah. Do you see I'm starting to shape this though? Take that. Build that. I would have to pick something hard. I could have just picked something easier to paint. So now do you see why I told you not to pick anything too difficult? Because a lot of these values in those, like these little flowers, they're going to be a pain. Okay, so I can go back in and, and adjust and change and move things around, make sure my lights, but like I said, lights really could be lighter the next day. Let me make sure this area gets dark under here in her eyes. Um, a little wonky. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is the hair. The hair, like I said, please don't do that because that's too dark, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that and I'm gonna do like a, just a little darker than her forehead. I'm gonna go in and. All right, you said we don't go straight with the dark when we come back to do the, the glaze. glaze. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct, yep. So you're gonna be adding color all the time to this painting. Now, one thing students do also is right here between the forehead to the hair, you guys go, ah, ah, right? It, it's, not, it's not like a wig, do you understand? So what you wanna do when I put this on here, I'm gonna take my brush, take out some of the paint, and I'm gonna just soften it up. Just soften it up, bring the forehead into it, the hair. You can adjust it as you paint later on. But, but don't do that because you're just gonna fight it, all right? So what you wanna do is make sure that, so I'm just gonna go in and just add. And I don't always mix my paint, like over here. I just mix it all in here if it's a big ass area. I mean, why, why mix your paint on a palette and then throw it on there when you're just gonna put the damn paint on there anyways? Um, all right, who's got questions? Let me keep going with this. And all of this again, with those hair, I'm gonna go in and soften. Do you see that? All up, okay? 
And so that, that's about, and if you're like, again, don't do that. I know you want to do that. And some of you will do that. And then you're gonna come in, I'm gonna say, it's too dark. And you're gonna have to go back and paint a lighter value on there. So just don't do it, all right? So I'm gonna go in and, and blend this again. Now with her hair right here, do this, isolate that. She really looks like a, a piggy right there. I can hear her yelling at me now. She's your guy's age. All right, so here we go. So do you hear that? You don't want that. You put more paint on there when you hear that noise. You wanna be able to glide it on there. And I didn't sand this. I just grabbed the board in the other room. Um, the neckline is the same. I smeared her neck here. I'm gonna bring that together. Sometimes when you guys do the neck, you go eh eh. The neck has a transition, even with this abrupt change, you still wanna soften everything up because there's nothing hard about it. Um, I'm gonna go in and just soften that up. Do you see that? Let me put it, I can put it on there and say, this is neck, this is chin, but then you take another medium value or wipe off your brush and smooth that area out so then it doesn't look eh eh. Because it will look like that and I will tell you that and you'll be like, well, how do I soften it, Sisavon? Well, if it's still wet, then you soften it by taking the brush. You can wipe off some of that and put it right back on there. Are you, all right, so I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do two more minutes. I'm gonna go in and put Zoe's thing on here. But, I, but when you ask me how do you paint it, I'm just gonna tell you just paint it, okay? Now, she got a polka dot dress on here. One thing you're gonna ask me is like, how do I get that texture on there? What I would do is I wouldn't paint all the polka dots, but I would paint some of the polka dot. Because it's a polka dot, I actually can take, um, I actually can take, um, I love to use, uh, uh, what is it, Q-tips, okay? And I, and I use that and I dot it with it. Okay, so I think I have some up there. I'm gonna show you real quick with this over here. So again, I know that's that dark as her dress. I don't want it that dark, all right? So I'm gonna make sure that I have my thing on here. I'm gonna show you how to do the polka dots real quick. I need more white. Um, all right. Just for you, I'm gonna just do a, a one spot there. <laughs> that was funny to watch. You should have seen me this weekend. Oh my God, on the Zoom live demo. <laughs> I, I wanted to curse at it because I was painting sideways, um, still sideways. Who did you do? Was it Tony Morrison? Or? Oh, I did um, Maya Angelou. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I saw um, Jacob Yeah, Jake, Jacob, Jacob always has his own interpretations of things. I could never get that kid to do exactly what I wanted him to do, like in terms of assignments. But he's at my alumni right now. He's at SIU getting his master's. So I told him to make me proud. I really liked his senior show. Yeah, he, he finally, you know, found something that he was really interested in so it's always nice to see that when you kids find something you like and if you get dry paint for god's sake take it off don't let it dry once it dries it's like hard to get off i feel like i've got some dry paint over here okay what i'm going to show you is the polka dots real quick i can already tell that's going to be fun with those ginkgo leaves oh my god all right i'm going to make sure that edge is soft and like I said, you can always add more paint. At the end, your whites are gonna get whiter and they can be a little thicker. So even if I, even, so see, this is still wet because it's driving me a little crazy. I'm gonna lighten it just a little bit. And I'll fix, I'll fix stuff as I go. There's those ball of her nose. It's such a different angle. Um, 
top lip always will get some light underneath there. Be careful not to make anything too dark. This area, I actually, I can push light a little bit more here on her chest cavity. And if you feel, feel yourself, it's the only class I say that to, that you can feel yourself. If you're painting yourself, even if you're not painting yourself, feel how the collarbone is flowing through that space. Do you understand? Feel the forehead and how it undulates or how the shape of your cheekbone starts to move. And that's going to give you an idea of and is it receding or is it coming forward, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do now is the polka dot, those polka dots. I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna take a little off, but what I'm gonna do, you have turf open, you have turf open, you have turf. So I'm gonna take my turf, and I'm gonna go ahead and find find my dots all right now i could take i could take anything it doesn't have to just be a q-tip i only like it because usually i have it around all the time but those got buttons coming down here i'm gonna go ahead and and do that do you see that and even if it's not that big of a button i can then go ahead and isolate it and make it this shape does that make sense so what i'm doing is i'm wiping out a little bit um, because then it just gives me an idea of where that's at, but then once it dries, I'll go back in and I'll put the white polka dot back in, okay? So let's say um, I'm going to go into this other spot because if it is too big, you can take some of this off, okay? Now you have a nub, okay? And then what we're going to do is there's little polka dots on those clothes right here, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm gonna take it off with a cleaner one. You can do that with a brush too, kids. I only like the Q-tips because it's already round and I don't have to fight with it. All right. And I probably, like if you have a lot of texture in some areas, I would go ahead and wipe it out and then paint it. All right. So I could take my brush fine all right um and then probably a smaller brush but the other thing is the other trick is what you can do what i like to do is take the back of my brush depending on the size of your the back of your brush some classicals will actually take their brush and they will um they will sharpen it to make really fine dots depending on the brush that you have I think I might be able to get away with it a little bit. Do you see how I'm putting polka dots on there? Now, if I dot it, it's going to have this, right? And the paint's going to suck up. So what you still want to do is use your brush. And I'm using, this one's a little big, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly soften around that. Just to make sure I don't have any texture still. Does that make sense? We don't, we don't want texture anywhere, kids. I know you're going to want to do it. You'll be like, but sis, Yvonne, there's texture. No, you're gonna paint the texture, not actually make texture. So now I can isolate the dots a little bit more and um, make it the size it needs to be. All right, so I want you to come up and look at this, because even here, like, I need to smooth this out just a little more. I don't want any of the texture on there. I wanna go in and really, really think about the movement in my, I'm pa taking paint off right now, and I'm really thinking about Zoe's form on her forehead. I know this area gets a little darker. I know her eyebrow goes up like that. But as the, they called it this, the first pass, means your, fir your first paint strokes, okay? Because you will, you will go over it more than once. I'm gonna make sure her hair just kind of cascades up like that. Okay, so you come and look at it. I want you to see how soft I've made everything. 